You want me to do it in English? Yeah. Okay, I have to do it in English. Do it both. Sorry. So start again. Start again. Yeah. Do it on both. Me team of the pair, Tato. Me te faka mara ma mai ki te hunga e mataki taki mai ana. Ko wai koe lumvea koe ha to hahi era tu ahua tanga kore roni. So let's start by um, telling our viewers who you are and where you're from, which church or which kind of what kind of karakia that you perform. And we'll start with you, Shane. Oh no, te na koe. Utira te na tatu katoa. Mihi kau nara kia kourua. Utira ki ngā kai mā taki taki te inira te mihi kia koutu katoa. Hako a kai vea rāku te e noho anu. So, hello to each and everyone out there in Zoom land. Oh no, the opportunity tonight to share some hopefully some pearls of wisdom uh, with everyone in respect of COVID and Krakia and uh, how we've dealt with that or our experience of that uh, during this period, which continues now. Um, my name is Shane Teruki, also known as Te Makau Pautokonui Arang, for those who know me at home. Uh, living here back home in the uh, King Country in Maniapoto, Te Awamutu, and uh, also for hailing from Ngāti Poro, uh, from Waipiro Bay, um, bloodlines mm -hmm. through there, uh, with uh, Te Whānau a Rā Kairoa, uh, Te Whānau a Uruahi, uh, Te Aitanga Mate, just to name a few. Te Aitanga Mate, just to name a few. But here mm -hmm. in, uh, in Maniapoto, uh, kua kukaranga a hapu, Ko ngā tiunu, ko ngā tikahu, uh, te maunga, ko kakepoko, te awa, ko waipā, te marae, ko te kōpua, uh, ko ngā tūpuna, ko unu rāua, ko hine māra. Uh, Karakau he hā, uh, engari, uh, ko taku whakapono, ko te tāhu hua tua nui, i a rangi rāua ko papa, uh, me ngā uri atua. Uh, ya tangaroa, ya tāne, ya waiatu, ya waiatu, takatura ki a hine nui te pō. So my, uh, uh, my basis, my, my foundation of belief is uh, the old atua, uh, tupuna atua, uh, the tāhuhu atua nui, the lineage of the gods of our ancestors, is where uh, I find my uh, solace, my strength and uh, my part to play uh, in the lives of uh, family, hapu and iwi, and in service to, to uh, the king i tanga. Ara ko te mea tūtahe kei te mea te kia koe e Shane I whakatako tu hea ngā kōrero kei roti a koe Mo tēnei taku e karifu e ue nei Tia mātahi o tō nei Nō reira, ko tōku me ki Ko te mea ko te mea ngā iwi kei roti te tai rāwhiti Ko au tētahi uri o te tai rāwhiti Engari i whānau nei a wau i roto i Tūranga. I taha taku o oku mātua kei roto i te rohe o te tai rāwhiti ko Ngāti Prau tēnā, ko Ngāti Kahuni, Laitanga Mahake, i whakatoa hea, whānau apa nui. Ko ena ngā whārangi i kei roto i aho mō tōku nei whakapapa. It's easier to say, no te tai rāwhiti nei aua. Ko taku ingoa, ko ingoa Māori, ko uremu i tūtupua ki e kaua tarangi. Ko ena hoki tōku ingoa Māori. Engari, i roti i tēnei ao, i oku i tāho oku nei whanaunga, i oku hoa, ko Bill Kaua te ingoa. Nā koe, e whakatibu nei aua i raru i te ngā ringa o oku mātua, 
so I suppose um, tonight, I'm a bit like you, Shane. Uh, I believe in faith. Mm. I, I don't worry. If our people haven't got faith in whatever, so um, I learned this when I when I uh, put the collar on, thanks to Bishop Muru. Muru Walters was the man that uh, that finally made me decide. Well, after all these years of being a kai karakia, iduti totato hahi, that perhaps the time has come when I should put the collar on. And I did that about ten years ago. But what I tell you what one thing that changed my way of thinking, Shane, was. Um, I managed, I was selected to go across the road to um, the Anglican Center of uh, Excellence in the middle of Rome, and I was there for a fortnight. And I was the only Maori there, of course, but uh, I had some phenomena from South Africa, from Africa, mm. from uh, Kenya, and from Nairobi. And uh, I came back from that hui. Uh, with my spirit really strengthened because it was it was there that I believed that my culture is my is my strength, and this is what I shared with my brothers from uh, Africa because they come from a, a a place where they are the majority, and uh, the Pākehā or Tauiwi are the minority. Ingari kotoreo moto motara rata nei karakia he karakia Tauiwi. So they were quite uh, interested in our history as a people, particularly uh, pre, uh, pre-treaty and post-treaty. Because uh, the word treaty was never ever, it was, it's not a word that they knew over in, in Africa. Uh, so they were very, very interested in, in that aspect of, uh, of our uh, uh, of, our, of our people here in New Zealand. The other thing that uh, they were very interested in was the three tikanga in the Iroti Tahai Nina, the tikanga Māori, the tikanga Pākehā, and the tikanga um, Mōngā Whanaunga o Te Mōna Nui They were very interested in that. So I, I was able to share with them the story leading up to that. That, that, that came into, into uh, the constitution of the Anglican Church in 1992. Thanks to the 
to the um, to people like um, Manu Bennett, Bishop Manu Bennett, uh, Professor Hidini Mead, who's still he's part of my my uh, church family at the moment. Um, so Eddie Dury, who looked at it from a legal point of view, but the the, the driver uh, at the time was uh, Professor Fatuniata. So they were more or less uh, the faces you could see, but there are a lot of others that were in, in the background that were part of that, those conversations. So the tikanga, the three tikanga uh, uh, commenced in 1992. And I've always said that, um, that uh, fellows like, and you know some of them too, uh, Shane, you know, Uncle Wee Tato Kuata, mm. Sam Rangihu, Joe Tuhiwai, Manga Cameron, you know, there's there's heaps of them. Tu no wano, tu no uh, Uncle um, from uh, from Tikuiti, um, and of course uh, he was he looked after uh, uh, Father Anderson. Rua, yeah, Rua, mm. and uh, Uncle Bob Emery. Ah, no. uh, yeah, you know, uh, I think of all those fellows if they were. They would revel in today's, in today's, uh, in the way that the, the three tikanga in the Anglican Church is shaped. They would, they would have reveled in because those are the sorts of things they were aiming for that we, that we, um, uh, and that we've got to keep strengthening that. But look, enough of that, that sort of history. But well, I'm getting back to what you said that, uh, and I, I'm of that ilk, that uh, I believe that our people haven't got any belief then we are lost as a people if we don't do anything about it. So to me, I, 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 don't, I don't mind. I've got all sorts coming to, to Kariki with, with us. I've got, Mom, I've got a couple of Mormons. I've got, uh, you name some of the face, they're there, they, they come. Why? Because of Te Reo. We conduct our services in Te Reo Māori. And our himene and our, our himene are not just the ones you see in the book. There are some old uh, uh, motetea from, uh, uh, that we know of from different areas. Uh, though to me, those are our psalms. Those are our Maori psalms. Uh, no different to the psalms of David. So uh, uh, that's my ministry uh, out there is to, uh, you know, whatever faith you are comfortable with, go for it. If that's the belief that's within you, you go for it. Uh, but the ones that I'm worried about are the ones that are losing their faith. And when I say losing their faith, I think faith in themselves. Mm. If you haven't, as you said, Shane, if you haven't got that belief within you, you know, something's got to be done. And I think, too, we can look at uh, all manner of things going around uh, the world at the moment, and you can see you know, desperation, yep. uh, you can see depression, you can see uh, the great weight of sadness that arises when there seems to be very little to cling to, yep. the very little in the way of surety and certitude that stems from having a belief system, yep. uh, stems from having uh, faith in uh, something. Yep. Uh, in our case, in, uh, we were speaking of a spiritual faith mm -hmm. uh, in and around whatever it is that we might consider to be our pillar of strength, mm -hmm. our pull. Uh, and I know for myself that uh, here in in Maniopoto and uh, throughout the Waikato, you know, there's a, a resurgence, so there's a active searching of uh, younger members of our tribes uh, who in pursuing te reo and pursuing a greater knowledge and understanding of tikanga are also questioning uh, the, valid, the validness, if you like, of, it, of these things in a, uh, in a modern context and also examining belief systems uh, those of their grandparents and parents, etc., and, and just really asking the the, the simple questions: are, Is this what? Is this working for me? Maybe not. What else is there? Yep. Uh, but it does come down to the very simple, uh, to a very simple commonality. Mm -hmm. um, where there is faith, 
uh, where there is whakapono, where there's belief, then uh, uh, there is strength to be found there. Yep. And when that is lost, uh, we're in deep trouble. Do you believe, and I'll ask the both of you this, do you believe um, uh, in the instance where we've got the Black Lives Matter protests in America that um, uh, some type of faith has been lost or do you think they have more faith now that because they're in bigger numbers and they're putting this cope up out to the world that um, it may um, become fixed, it may, may get fixed. Um, we'll start with you, uh, 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 Uncle Bill. Yeah, well, having, you know, having had some experience uh, uh, when I was on this, co this uh, course I was telling you about, we had uh, a Jamaican, uh, uh, American Jamaican, uh, who was an ex raster and he is a minister in the Episcopalian Church in the States. He's in one of the richest parishes in, uh, in America. He's, his church is in Wall Street. And he says, uh, one of the things about it, when you pass the plate around, you don't hear any clicking. It's all, it's all rustled, you know, paper money. <laughs> what he reckoned was uh, one of the, 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 the problems that the American um, black is facing is the loss of their culture. Uh, now, he says he, he's, he's luckier because Jamaica, uh, they're a different sort of... Uh, Although they belong to the same sort of iwi, uh, when the slave traders brought the, the, those people from um, East Africa across to the States, uh, some of them went to, of course, to Jamaica, the, the English, the ones that the British were. So, you know, but he, seems, he says that, there's, that they, have got, they still retain a bit of their culture, only a bit. But he says the problem in, the, in America itself with the American... Uh, Af African people is that if, if, if their immediate faith is God. That uh, they have got no connection like Shane and I've been talking about with uh, with uh, our people, because I, I reckon that we're lucky. All most, if not all, indigenous people are pretty lucky because we can just go like this and we're in the past. Whereas Tawiwi. 3,000 years plus of civilization, they've got to go like this. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's something I think that, uh, that our people need to, to remember, that we just have to go like that and we're in the past. Uh, we're, we're a young nation as Maori people. That's why in my mission as a, as a, as a priest in a church, I want to make sure we don't lose that connection. Because I know now in my own heart that that's our strength. And what uh, Shane and I have been talking about uh, is, you know, we need to, for instance, an example is, um, to me, my grandfather told me, many uh, us kids, when we didn't think much of thing, me moe o koutou mokupuna ma, ko te karaiti he Māori te karaiti, ka hore he pākeha, he Māori, ko te mea ka iaia tona reo, tona hautu me tona iwi. In other words, and he was right. Christ wasn't a white man. Christ was a Nazarene. And uh, so, you know, that all came back to me. And so that's sort of been the, the way I've been looking at things uh, since I became a priest in, in our church. Because I was saying to Shane, uh, our more tea tea, they're beautiful. And they're just like the Psalms of David. They talk about love, hate, kill, eat you, tickle you on the side of the hill, all that sort of stuff. Well, it's not just us. The Psalms say that too. Mm. So in other words, you know, that's, our, that's the connection that, that I'm using with regards to strengthening our, our, our culture with our people. And because those people in America don't have that, possibly, I'm not sure if they do or not, but they, they have lost their connection to Mother Africa. Yes. Um, that's what you're saying, eh? That, they, that um, through the brutality of what happened to them, Yes. Um, and this continuation in terms of police brutality towards them. Yes. Um, that this, this is why 
this is having such an effect on, on them. Is that what you're... Yep, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Shane, how will Fakaro get that up? Well, would I consider what's uh, been happening, what's being reported, whether or not we can believe uh, a lot of what's being reported and uh, make the statement that, yes, Black Lives Matter is a thing that's happening. But, you know, in the way in which things are reported, uh, very hard to uh, see through, well, sometimes it's hard, but often it's not. You can see through the portrayals of what's happening, uh, often coloured. And... Uh, in an untruthful way. However, what we do know is Black Lives Matters has embraced the world. Wherever uh, Native peoples have been oppressed, wherever there has been slavery, etc., it has taken a hold. People have been swept up by it. Uh, and all the way back here to, to Aotearoa. Uh, there is a common chord, a commonality in what is happening in America. It strikes a chord with people all over. No. And you know, in this time, uh, I don't see that things are getting darker. I see things getting brighter. And when one turns a light on in the room, it illuminates the room, but it also causes shadows in the recesses and dark places in the corners of the room. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing um, this evolution, if you like, uh, of uh, the human state. And we do know that you know, a lot of this comes down to uh, the superiority complexes of a particular group of people who have deemed this to be their world and all things beneath it uh, in one way or another are inferior. And what we do know as Māori and what other cultures know, native cultures and uh, the, the American, uh, the black Americans know that this is not so. Mm. This is not so. This is not peculiar to us, nor is it peculiar to America, but that people are not inferior because of the color and of their skin, nor are they superior because of the color of their skin. That is a human construct, and it is nonsense. That is a state, a mental disorder, a learned disorder that has been practiced and preached and taught uh, in some countries for generations. And Aotearoa is not much different. We must remember that this country was invaded uh, by a country that had perfected the art of colonization. And they had manifested their superiority through practice uh, and the institutions that they created in order to affirm in their own minds, that superiority. Uh, they took the one would, what I would suggest are the worst aspects or possible aspects of the, uh, the Bible and used that as a means of also uh, uh, maintaining and growing their colonization across the world. Uh, can't be denied that we were invaded by people from England the English, but if you examine who they were, they were French, they were Irish, they were Scottish, they were every extraction possible that lived in that country. The one commonality was that they are subjects of a kingdom. Uh, the other commonality and fundamental to their belief system as being superior is their Christianity. Uh, now, just to be sure, I'm talking about the worst aspects that could be possibly drawn out of uh, that belief system. Like any belief system, uh, you know, like any uh, circumstance, there are always those who will draw upon the worst or take the positive aspects and turn them uh, to other means. You're talking about um, doing stuff in the name of God 
that could possibly be deemed evil if we look at it today. Is that right? There's right and there's wrong and killing people in the name of any God, mm. enslaving people in the name of any God, uh, and then preaching love, hope, and faith and peace at the same time. That's wrong. Yeah. 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 And we just know, they, everyone knows it. That's just, just wrong. And it's not peculiar to Christianity, you know, mm. uh, not peculiar at all. But um, if for our experience, uh, we can definitely say that's been the experience here in Aotearoa, which yeah. does put in, you know, when I consider some of uh, my uri here in Manyapoto and from my own mana, you know, some of the conversations that I had is, you know, how do they reconcile an invasion uh, by a Christian com uh, country, by a Christian uh, kingdom, by Christians, and uh, the faith and the churches that they have uh, grown up in, whether that be uh, Catholicism, uh, followers of the Anglican, um, any number of them, all the way through to Rātana and Ringatū, uh, who are schisms, again, of, of the teachings of uh, uh, Christ, or certainly the Old Testament and the New Testament. And one of the things that comes to to the discussion at all times is this notion of identity and that uh, they recognize in their own, many of them recognize in their own uh, papa in their own kaupapa kōrero, their own tāhuhu kōrero, their own history accounts of our ancestors themselves. And they see themselves mirrored there in those, those teachings. And so they find that way. Uh, that um, if we've got a growing body of people that are, are seeking that way forward. But whatever way forward uh, we choose, there is a commonality to uh, our success, our need to cleave together and be united um, and keep moving. And I think that that moves us forward, enables us to progress despite all of the trials and tribulations which assail uh, every one of us uh, in our experiences here in Aotearoa. And that's faith and belief in something. Yes. Faith and belief. If your huarahi takes you to Muhammad, then where you go? No. If your huarahi takes you to Krishna, then where you go? And if that uh, same uh, notion uh, leads you, if down te ara tahito, uh, to the path of, the, of our tupunatua, then well, you know, that's all well too. But if we have no path of faith and belief, things get really tricky, mm -hmm. especially at the, at the cornerstone belief. And uh, you can correct me if you think I'm incorrect here, Ekoro, but I think the cornerstone principle of who we are as a people, as Māori, is a principle that uh, we are in part wayward, that we are in part spirit. And when, and faith, belief, whakapono, uh, are intrinsic aspects of faith, of wayward, sorry, of spirituality. And when we don't have those things in our lives, we lose something of ourselves. And I remember years ago, many actually when I was a child, hearing the words uh, echoing out on a marae at uh, Te Rautahi in, in Kawero. I forget now whose tongue it was, uh, but the Koma Tua, I believe from Tuhoi or thereabouts, uh, voice echoed out across the marae, said a line that struck uh, a chord with me. And uh, I, if we are to lose our regard and our need to grieve and connect with our ancestors, those who have passed away, then we lose a fundamental part of who we are. 
and it's similar, if not the same, with uh, having that whakapono, that connection, that belief, belief system, mm -hmm. that without that we have fundamentally lost something. We will have switched something off. Yeah. We'd be running on a half a battery. <laughs> I agree. In, 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 agree. in, in, in that, that uh, Shane, how important is karakia? And I'll get you both to answer that, but we'll start with you, Shane. How important is karakia? Karakia is absolutely important. It is essential to one's life. Uh, karakia, though, let me explain that karakia is different things to uh, different followings. So for me, uh, as a practitioner, as a believer, as a follower of Wenku uh, and uh, the Tahuhu Atsuanui, the lineage of the, the gods, um, Karakia is essential because it is the means, the moment, the, the conduit, it is the uh, means by which I converse with the god or the gods of my understanding and it is a means by which they converse with me without it i have failed to uh, address acknowledge and connect to and speak to and hear from my atua it sounds like you're saying that is more than just prayer absolutely Absolutely. Bill, I reckon you'd agree too. It's absolutely, absolutely. not just prayer. Prayer is the flapping of one's lips. Mm. Karaki <laughs> is merely the moving, at the, the uh, regulated uh, assembly of syllables and, and noise. But without the, the, without the uh, whakapuna, without the faith and beliefs that we have, without the ritual, if you like, of karakia, you know that the preparatory work that one has to do, or certainly I, I do, the preparations, work, no matter which time of day it is, and, or, or what time of the week, or so on and so forth, there are preparatory things that we need to happen. And it's more than uh, a learnt, a rote learnt karakia. It's much more than that. And sometimes it's without words. It is being in a uh, living but karakia is, is a, a principle of living. It's a way in which one carries themselves. And albeit we can't carry ourselves, uh, you know, 100% of the time in that mode of karakia. But, when we, but it is something that we must do on a regular basis that enables, certainly enables me to meet challenges of, on a day-to-day -day scale and on a COVID scale, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And the responsibilities of caring for others uh, in my in my care, uh, Fano and Hapu, the Marai, you know, and there the are things there. And so part of it is his ritual, which is also the voice of Kraki. It enables. Uh, and you know, ministers of, of the cloth do this all the time. And I don't think uh, those who watch it can see the relevance of, of sometimes of the, the ritual aspects of, of uh, uh, karakia carried out within the churches. But they serve a purpose. They serve a purpose as a preparatory purpose. There's an engagement purpose. There is a creating of the context by which the sacred connection between this, you know, between the uh, believer and its God can be made. Shane, in, in as an Anglican, Uncle Bill, how important for, to you is karakia? Look, I agree entirely with what Shane has just said because I, I the one thing that, that concerns me, there's a bit of a worry to me today. Uh, you know, uh, with the organisations that I'm connected with, and uh, particularly now with uh, with Final Aura and mm. the work that Final Aura is doing, we talk. You hear people talking about Wairua Tanga, Manaki Tanga, all the tangas, and yet it appears to be just lip service. Mm. Oh, no. To me, it's how you live your life. That to me, that's part of. Uh, uh, in addition to what Shane has shared with us, 
to me, this is an addition. It's how you live your life. Do you demonstrate manaki tanga? Do you demonstrate wairua tanga? So, you know, karakia to me is all those things, but it's also the way in which you live your life. That's why I went into my organisation one time and I saw all the stuff on the wall. And I said, I asked the question, do you guys know what that karakia is all about? No. We'll take it down. You know what? You go into Pākehā organisations, God bless their souls, and you see manaki tanga, but do they really know what it's about? Do they practice it? It's all very well having it up on the wall, but it's the way to me, the other way that one that does karakia is the way in which you live your life, the way in which you manaki people. Uh, so I just want to add that to what Shane has shared. Was what he has shared, I agree with. And I, I, I think also, and this is something that uh, a lot of clergy have got to realise. It's all very well bow, bowing about it on the, up on the pulpit, but do you actually preach it? I mean, sorry, do you actually live it? And I think that, to me, that's uh, that's a, a very important thing because our people can see through you like a like a pane of glass. They know if you're all waha and no kaha. So um, I just wanted to add that, Shane. Uh, Oh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree, and I think there there are. You know, when I think about karakia, and yeah, and again, you know, it can't occupy our space a hundred percent of the time, but you know, twenty five percent of the time is a good, yeah. is, is a really good piece of work there yeah. uh, in one's life. But karakia in itself, the way of being, living, and interacting with not only with your atua but also with with everyone else and aspects of the world. You know, karakia is the art of living. Mm. Karakia is the art of living. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Without it, we're only half alive, if there is such a thing. Yeah. Well, just to add to that, Jane, you know, I didn't know that we Māori were poor until we moved into the city. <laughs> because, uh, you know, we used to work, we used to high stand, oh, we're not poor. We had plenty of kai, we had we were properly clothed, we were warm, we were looked after. And then when we moved from the rural, from the marae, into town, hello, that's when we've heard that we were poor. But so that's why I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying, because our old people lived it. They lived it. And uh, that's one thing that uh, I'm, 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 I'm proud to say, that I was lucky enough to be brought up in that sort of atmosphere. Uh, back on the Marae, uh, as a kid, perhaps you may not take particular notice of it at that time. But as you get older, man, it clicks in. And that's when those memories come back and think, I've seen this before. Yeah. I've heard this before. I've smelt this before. And, you know, it's in that. Or even I've tasted this before. And it's in that that this stuff begins to arise again. And that connection is made back to... Uh, the old people and what they said, what they did, and how they responded to different situations. And all of that has come flooding back, no doubt for yourself too, Bill, mm -hmm. in respect of uh, the lockdown period that we've just been through. Uh, and in some ways still existing, that we've brought all those talents, all of that experience, that experiential knowledge, that mythological knowledge, the uh, tahawairua, all of that, we brought that back uh, in this particular period, or certainly that's, that's what I've uh, brought back in part to uh, my families. Uh, at the closing of our marae, we're one of the first, if not the first marae to close in, in uh, Manjapoto, maybe even Waikato, um, recognising the, the influence uh, that COVID would have uh, over our hapu. And we made that decision very quickly, but not lightly. But there was a, once that was done, that was the, um, uh, that was the exercise of, of the governance of the marae, uh, which was followed quickly by the exercise of the tahawairua, uh, karakia, uh, and made the point of going down there to the pa and recording it for the new audience, which was sitting at home uh, on Facebook. So going live and recording that karakia 
and noting too ngā tohu, te puta ngā mai o ngā tohu i te wā o te karakia. Tau mai, tau mai ngā, uh, ngā tuakana uh, a ngā ti haku turima rā ngā manu, uh, tā mai rā rā tau te wā o te karakia, uh, pai te whakarunga tiki te tīwara mai, mm-hmm. au ngā reo, uh, ngā reo ngā uri o tāne. Nei reira mō hea au, ā, o tau toko hungia, tēnei krakia, te katinga hoki o te marae, tā mai, ko taike mai nā, nā, nā manu rā, nā tuakana, uh, me te āhua no ki rā te o tau wā ata, uh, i kita atu rā hau, te taunga mai o te kohu ki runga i tō mātau maunga, uh, tohu pai te rākia mātau. Uh, so on and so forth. So all of those, but you know, so the physical aspect was taken care of by the governors of the Morai, the Kaitiaki, and then another aspect was taken care of on the Tahawaiwa. Mm-hmm. And uh, to quote Paul uh, Temara, me tana, te tahi wana tohu tohu kia mātou i roti te pane ki retanga o te reo. Uh, e akoranga pāi, ana ko tāna, i mea mai kia mātou, e takirua nga mea kato te ao māna. E taha kiko kiko, e taha wairua hoki tōna. And so, you know, these two things go hand in hand, but being able to share karakia across with the uh, with the whānau, with the hapū and the greater iwi uh, in our area here, within the king country and the greater waikato, being able to share karakia and uh, across Facebook. Mm-hmm. And just noting too, just how many people, how many uri channeled into that. And you could tell by how many uh, shares happened and how many people were watching uh, all the way through and how many times uh, it was shared and how many, you know, that's still out there somewhere in, uh, uh, in Facebook land. Mm-hmm. But to watch also the response uh, similar response by other mātanga, uh, karakia mātanga, whakapono, and so all around uh, a movement uh, of uh, karakia emboldened or required as a response to, not to COVID, mm. but a response to um, the people. And the and the shakingness, you know, the insecurities uh, that they were feeling, the unknown is a challenge, mm-hmm. and this has been a period of of unknowing, you know, of not knowing what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd just like to add to that, if I may, Adrian. Absolutely, yeah, um, because uh, that was my next question: was to ask you both what you did during the lockdown, and you've answered <laughs> perfectly, Jay. But kahuri uh, atira kia koe, Uncle Bill. Well, you know, um, this pandemic is a terrible thing. Uh, it's it's taken a lot of people from around the world, and now I know why this nation of ours was called God's own. We're tucked here at the bottom of the world. You know, the more I hear, hear this term God's own, I think it's quite right uh, because we're well out of the way, uh, but we're still in some sort of danger if we don't watch ourselves. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So one thing that I really, it's, it's been a plus uh, for us uh, during this period of, of lockdown has been uh, how we've been put into a situation where we can't embrace each other physically, but we can embrace each other spiritually. And I think that's, that's really come out loud and clear uh, from my point of view with our karakias that we've been having. When we first kicked off in lockdown, we were having karakia every evening at the request of our people. And uh, my wife has kept a register of, uh, of each evening we've had karakia. And would you believe that uh, it's an extent of 700. Uh, okay, it's the same people coming in each evening, but we've, we've just done a total like that. And uh, 
I did my first tangi in the first week in lockdown when, when my own nephews passed. Uh, and we had his tangi on, on Zoom. Uh, we had people, his, uh, two or three of his kids, uh, Zoomed in from uh, Australia. Um, we were wondering how the hell we were going to do this, but we did it and it worked. And the tears still flowed. Uh, and I, myself, and, uh, and one or two others of my whanaunga felt um, really spiritually connected because we couldn't embrace each other. But we saw each other on, uh, on the screen and, you know, that was good enough. I've done one house blessing uh, on Zoom. Uh, although I made sure that the fellow man of the house had the water, and walked around with the water, and he said, oh, am I allowed to do this, uncle? I said, hey, as long as you're doing that, I'll do the words, uh, go for it. So we, that, that, that was done. Every Sunday since lockdown, we've had uh, Hakari Tapu on, uh, on, uh, on Zoom. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's forced us into looking at other ways of reaching out. One of my heart cases said to me, Oh, I said, oh, yeah. How high? Oh, well, you don't have to pass the playground. <laughs> <laughs> well, lo and behold, I'm sure there's an online way of getting past that. <laughs> hey, well, listen to this. <laughs> I said, oh, oh yeah, yeah you're, you're right, but oh, well, never mind. So uh, after that, so was, I got a few phone calls and a couple of emails. Wanted to know, well, hey, yeah, he, the fellow was quite right. How can we? So I said, okay, I'll get on to my treasurer to send you out the, the, the vestry's uh, bank account number. No, I'll tell you what, we've got generous people. Yeah. And uh, so I said to them, uh, hey, there's no need. You know, we're all in this together. We're all, we're all one final under this one. But hey, thank you very much for, for what you fellas have, uh, have given towards, uh, towards uh, the, the church. But... Um, no, I, I just wanted to add that that uh, mm. it's put us in, it's made us look at different ways of mm. getting to our people, and what we've decided to do that when we uh, I have my first uh, karakia um, uh, in a building, and we've only got at the moment I've got one karakia spot in Wellington. The Kongarao National Trust have uh, being an ex-member there. They've uh, given me the okay to have karakia there once or twice. Uh, a month. So I've said to our people, look, when we, when we get into a building, we will not only have a physical karakia, but we'll have a Zoom karakia as well. Because I had people from as far away as uh, Kaikohe uh, beaming in, because their daughters are down here in Wellington working. So, and I, you know, I'm, I'm um, listen to what you're saying, Shane, about the Mariah, you know, that's what I miss. I'm away from home. Uh, I'm a Taurehere person. I'm an urban Maori, so this is the makeup of a lot of our of my uh, of my church whanau down here. We're all we're all totally and I think that's that's what that's what's made us more uh, stronger together. Mm. It's been because of that. We're away from home, but we can cling to each other to get that the sort of stuff that we've been talking about tonight to to strengthen our haputanga, our whānau tanga from where we come from, by being together as a tōrehere rōpū and being able to share those sorts of things. I think uh, clearly through the experience that I've had uh, in being able to offer karakia uh, via Zoom, via uh, uh, Skype, one attempt at doing it through Skype and certainly uh, uh, through uh, Facebook mm. have enabled relations wherever they are in the uh, world to participate. Uh, that can only be a good thing. It has raised the question though, and uh, you know, there's still some discussion to be had about it. Because in as much as the sharing of karakia has happened, there's also too the... the uh, prolification of uh, any number of uh, means to capture things like tangihana on the mara. And uh, we've seen 
in some cases, the intrusion into that personal time of grieving on the Monai with um, iPads and uh, phones, etc. And um, I can think of a couple of ministers that, when conducting karakia, uh, almost immediately all of the iPads went up in the room. And one has to think, hmm, maybe we have to have a discussion about this. <laughs> how, how, yeah. But um, it also puts into, into one's mind that here we are sharing karakia across, without boundaries. Mm. The world is, has no boundaries now that we can, our reach can be across to wherever technology allows. Uh, one thing that did come through, as we you know, as you mentioned, you know, the tangihana and things, you know, the preventive measures taken by the uh, government also prevented us from holding tangihana. And uh, one thing that it brought to me was I was less worried about physical grieving or going to the marae and sharing in whaikōrero and karanga and mō te atea and, and the, the whole collective uh, context of being there physically, which is more about uh, what's good for the people than it is about the person who has passed. Mm. Um, but uh, noting too that our Aotearoa not so long ago didn't always have the means to go for tang, mm. uh, but that they took it upon themselves in their own space to to grieve. You know, mm. uh, uh, so to to grieve from afar and to uh, create works of art in respect of waiata mo te atea, tangi apakura. And as I listen to the conversations developing over uh, the COVID period and the inability for people to go to the marae, not allowed to, to hungi, Oh, it did occur to me. I said, maybe we've lost an aspect of ourselves. What mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that you know that we need to be talking about again because it it comes down to um, you know, to uh, to ourselves. You know, when we talk about our tikanga, and of course, one of the tikanga that um, been long lost but revived during this period uh, was the pressing of one's. Uh, finger to the to the nose is symbolically hungi from afar. Mm. Lovely, fantastic, but there are other measures. Yeah, uh, you know, and I can think of any number of our kuya uh, many years ago who didn't have to be at the tangi in order to be at the tangi. <laughs> that where they were is where it was. Yeah. That's right. And they lived in that space. And so there's some, some things that we were prevented from doing, but I think there were also some things that uh, we lost the memory of. Mm. Mm. And I think that's, uh, yeah, and in those spaces, uh, faith becomes a big uh, player in carrying us through. Karakia becomes a big player in the unification of us in our various homes across the country, across the world, as a point of unification, a point of uh, healing and solace, and of uh, creating that close-knit association that we might otherwise have when we are together physically. But also noting and going back to that, that uh, word, retakirua na meakato te it, there's a duality to all things in the Māori world. Corona. 
o te tahawairua te mea uh, i haere i taka mua atu. Mm. Uh, o te tahawairua te, te iho uh, e tuara mo tātau i roto i te, te wā whataha kene, uh, haera kene. Mm. E hoi no, kwa, kwa hikina uh, nga tapu whakakahore nei o tātou hui hui, uh, nō reira uh, ko tā tātou i āe nei, nō te hoki tōnia ki taha kiko kiko. Hono, uh, ko te tūmana ko kwa kore pea tātou, me, me kaua tātou e warewa, uh. ki te taha wairua i kawea tātou i roto i te wā o te mahu. So, you know, in respect of our experience, you know, we've had to uh, subsist well on our karaki, on our faith, on our beliefs. And now as the, the um, level one has come upon us and we're somewhat much more freer and we can do the things that we might have normally done before, um, we should also continue to maintain that taha wairua. Right. I think uh, you, your experience uh, within uh, the Hahi would you would have seen many of those the moment they're in trouble they are faithful, oh, very, <laughs> very faithful. <laughs> and once they're out of the uh, out of the fry pan and well out of the kitchen to utter safety, oh well, kapale kapale kumudi alato tera tera kai. But we're all human. Realities <laughs> 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 of us as a people, uh, all people. Well, you know, I'm here to keep Koru and Koru, Koru Roy the Pony. Hey, fuck a copy, I get it. Ta ta Koru Roy the Pony. I need to part time for commuting. So, just to round up our uh, our, our uh, interview, our Koru Roy. Um, the last question, and this is to both of you, do you, and you kind of sort of talked about it a little bit, Shane, but do you have, both have a message of hope for our country as we move forward? Not just our country, our hapu, our Fano, our iwi, as we move forward through, we've gone through corona, and now we're moving forward and we, um, we're blocking off the borders, um, we still have to be careful. We still have those things around us. Um, but as we move forward, what is your message to the people watching us? Mm. And we'll start mm. with you, Shane. I think the words that uh, arise within me on hearing that question is very simply... That life is precious. And that from time to time, you know, if I think about that notion that life is precious, that from time to time we just have to do some hard yards. But in doing so, we shouldn't harden ourselves. And, uh, you know, we can be acclimatized to the changes and chances of the world and harden ourselves to the reality of the world. Uh, and our experiences, but you know, kia ngā wari tonu a roto, te, te ngā kau, kia ngā wari. A ki te māro raua te ngā kau, ah, he raru raru kei te haere. So our, our inner being uh, remain uh, easy, not soft, soft is something else, but remain easy, kia ngā wari, so that we can bend and flex with the times as we need to. That doesn't mean to say that our inner self can't be staunch from time to time, but that we be easy and easy on ourselves first and foremost, because we're our worst critics, <laughs> our own worst critics, but to be a uh, a friend to ourself. I look in the mirror sometimes and just have to be a friend to oneself, because in doing so, we can be a friend to others. So, otaku uh, matahi apo te ora, that life is precious and we must cling to it and experience it, embrace it. Some, you know, there's no point in us um, 
hating on this one and that one because God, that gets boring really quickly. I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't think I can keep it up for too long. Might have a uh, might come come over a bit about it, but you know. And after a while, you let it go because there's always another one to come along that you can amu amu about and come come about. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, I can't, I can't, but only say I agree with what, 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 because uh, we have, we have talked about this earlier, and I'm getting mm. back to the belief thing, uh, and the faith thing, because I've always been one that you know, if one has not got faith in oneself. You know, that's, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, whatever that faith may be, you've got to have faith. Uh, my faith is, I don't call myself just a Christian. I call myself a Maori Christian because the treasures of my ancestors are still very much part of my heart. And uh, that means a lot to me because I find that uh, a lot of uh, our people's beliefs prior to 1814 uh, are very much in line with what you read in the Old Testament. Our people were Old Testament people. Uh, some of our folks reckon we're the lost tribe of Israel. Uh, I used to laugh at that, but by crikey, sometimes you've got to think about it. But it was the lifestyle of our people and all I would say most if not all the indigenous people were very much Old Testament. Even, dare I say, Tauiwi were the same. Uh, in their 3,000 years of, uh, of existence, plus existence. But I can only but support what, uh, what Shane's saying, but I get back to what we talked about earlier, in having faith in oneself to do that. You got that, man, you're not gonna be lost. And it's all that is in the, a lot of people say that uh, think with your head, not your heart. I'm the other way around. I say think with your heart. What comes up in the head is transformed in here to get there. So I think that's really what Shane has been, has been sharing with us now. And uh, so that's, that's my contribution. I know we didn't start with the karakia, but um, uh, kawaiho kia koru at the karakia haifaka kapi yake te tatata po. Ne? Mahau pea e tīmata anko peuara mahau e whaka kapi ake, Shane. Ne? O mātou e ki atu ki ako e Shane. Koto mea, i koro nei au au mo ngā whakaura kai rotu i te ngāka. O te rā, te āhuatanga, uh, i wero ngia o ku mātua tūpana i roti a. Ngā, ngā karakia o rātau o e rāwa, ko e nata me tūtahi i roti a nei. I te tāinga mai o te, te rongo pai, e, i taku whakaaro e rite ana, ngā āhuatanga e pāna ki o tātou nei mātua tūpana, ki ngā kōrero e whakawahau tia nei a te kraiti kia tata, te aroha, mm. me uera āhuatanga. Uh, nō reira, e hoki atu o kōku whakaaro ki, ki ngā kōro tanku kraua, e kraiti, ko te kraiti he Māori. Nō reira, ki au nei, e karaki e poto tēnei, māhau e whakakapi. Nō reira i te atua, <coughs> anai mātau e, E hui nei runi tēnei tapu-tapu i tēnei pō. I runga hoki nei koe ngā whakaaro kei roto i a māua tahi o te kaupapa i whakatakotu hia tō tātou tamaiti ki a mātou. Nō reira, ahakoa kei te mōhio tātou te nuinga o ngā ingoa mō tēnei wā. Ko Mauhama tēnā, ko Krishna tēnā. Te nui ngā o ngā, o ngā ingo kainui. Ingari, kia mātou te Māori, 
je Ivo Matuva Kurekoj. Torej, da ona ima tal v tej podnej je fakatil veretje o matel nakal kjakoj. Ma hal je je fakapato o ringa, ki ni mote ao nej, me ti vi katoho nga whenua huli noa i to tato nej ao. Kja patu nje koe, te nej ngangara, te ngawana, te ngakal, te ngawana, nga tinana me nga wairua o te nuinga. No rei da, to te nej te whakatu wheretie o mātou nei ngā kakea koe, i rungi te ngā te matua te tama, me te wairua tapu. Amen. Papa e alangi, papa e alangi, tēnei al, tēnei al, te omuake nei i tā kutoki. Toki nui, toki ro, toki haha, toki hahau. Ka hahau atu taku toki nei ki kāru o te rangi ki take take ora. Ki a re rei ho mai ko te wai o rongo mai, he wai tohi mauri, he wai tohi mauri. Tēnā tohi a mai mātau te iwi. Te nga tohi a mai mātau nga karangata nga kumaha o te ao. Ki te tohi wiwi, ki te tohi wawa, ki te tohi whakamana. Whakamana i ngā tūmana ko pae kei roto i te whatumana wa o tangata. Whakamana i te hia hia o te tangata. Ia kau para hia atu te nei mate, ino, wa pākaha ki te ao. Te nei te ino i te nei te tangi atu nei ki au kou tau e te tāhuhu atu anui. Tēnā, takahi ārā ne au hou, tūturu ohiti hoa mau a kia tīnā, tīnā hau mi e hui e tāhi. Wēnō rā, tēnā kōrua i iwo kōrua kōrero i tēnei pō, kā nui te mihi atu kia kōrua, a tāhua te whakarongo atu ki wō whakāro e pāna ki te kaupapa nei, nā reire, nei rā te mihi mai o hā. Te mihi nui ki a kōrua. Kia ora rā. Kia ora. Tēnā kūtai.